Welcome back, everybody, to my corner office, I guess you could call it, of my garage. Got me a fire going. Feels good. Uh, today, I got a helmet to do. Uh, tonight, I should say. Yeah. So, uh, got this helmet for a buddy of mine who races uh, dirt track. Painted a one for him a couple years ago. Uh, had a big rat fink on it. Looks really cool. So, this time, we're doing something just striping this one. Uh, so, I'm going to get to it, and you all can watch me paint it. All right, we're going to get right into this. I'm going to get this thing cleaned up, and we'll see how the angles are going to be on this because painting a ball pretty much and trying to get you all to be able to see it is turning out to be more difficult than I thought. So I'm going to do the best I can for you guys to see everything, and we're going to get this helmet done. And we got a nice silver helmet, and I'm going to put some black and bright blue stripes on it. And we're gonna throw a little bit of pink in there because this man has a little girl on the way. So we're gonna put a little pink in there for him. Cause it is a racing family and I believe they're gonna have the helmet in with the baby pictures, which I think is pretty cool. So we're gonna throw a little pink in there for her. And I actually painted, uh, hopefully you all go to my Facebook page, or I may put it in my first video, I'm not sure, but I painted his a toolbox that is the baby changing station. It's pretty cool. So if you guys go, to, uh, I put it on my Facebook. I don't know if I put it in the first video or not, but it's like a Harbor Freight toolbox, and uh, I lettered it up and uh, striped it for them to kind of match the colors in the room, and it turned out really cool. They, they're real happy with it. So uh, it was real cool that they're bringing the race car theme in for the baby. I, th I think that's really neat. So. But all right, I'm going to get my center line laid out and get to painting. All right, moved you in a little closer here. Maybe you can see what I'm doing. But I'm just trying to get me a little bit of a mark there. Then we'll go about here. That blue is not going to do it. I'm going to get a different color. Man, that's still hard to see. You all probably can't see it at all, but. Pretty much all we're doing is just making a chalk line. So whenever I rip the tape off, all this chalk will stay there. And that's how I get my center lines. If you see me pause, I'm trying to look at my camera here, trying to make sure I, I can get everything in there. I don't know if you can see it. Very hard to see. Yeah, there it is. That gives you an idea. That's just going to be my center line. Then pretty much whenever I'm striping, that's all that I do. Now, whenever I go over, I may make me some hash marks to give me an idea of where I'm going. But for the most part, you're not going to see this both sides at the same time. So most of the time I just wing it. And that's the whole thing with pinstriping is it's not perfect. Never will be. If it is, a computer did it. So, And we don't like those anyways. So... Now, get my paint mixed up, and we'll get to paint. But get any, my advice for any beginning pinstriper is to go to a car show where they're having a charity pinstriping auction or whatever, and go in there, take your brushes, take everything, and go in there and tell some of them older guys that, I want, that you want to learn how to pinstripe. And they can either show you where to go, or they may even pull you in there and teach you. A lot of guys did that for me, and it helped me out a lot. Most of it I learned on my own, but them guys really helped me.
a lot of questions I get at car shows is how do you come up with the design? And it's pretty much just wherever the brush goes, that's where I go. And a lot of times I, you look at my work, a lot of my designs are pretty similar. I usually start them about the same way, end them about the same way. I guess you could kind of say it's kind of my style, I guess. Don't really know if I have a style, but one guy, one striper was picking on me one time at a charity auction. Because he's seen me doing this. I pull my lines backwards. Or going uphill like that. For some reason. I just started doing it one day. And it just kind of stuck. So I've always done it like that since. He said all you have to do is this. Just turn it over. Well. Some day, sometimes you can't just turn it over. And for the beginners, I just pallet my brush whenever I get to the point. Sometimes I got to turn this thing over. Whoops, sorry. Turn this over eight or nine times to figure out where I want to go next. I think we're just going to do this. And some beginners I've seen, they don't go back and clean up their corners. Take your time. Do the little hash marks. Take Unless that's your style. I'm not, not knocking nobody if that's their style. But uh, just take time. Clean up your lines. Make them nice and crisp. So there we go. There's the center. Damn. Camera really makes it look wide, but it's not. Another tip for beginning pinstripers is the I'm right handed. So always do your left side first because when you're matching the right side, it's easier to do. So that's just a little little tip. And this time I did I did turn it over, but I can flip it over and go right and left also. Or should say go right, then right again. And it's very hard to do this on a helmet because they like to roll around everywhere. And when you make a happy little accident, good thing about wet paint, smooth it right up, smooth it right out, and you're done with the accident. Now, sometimes. I quit hitting you. If you can get this thing set right on your knee, and I'm probably going to get my head right in here, but i got to be able to see. Usually if I'm, if I'm pulling long lines, i got to go back and 
reload, get my brush nice and wet. But I'm hoping this summer I got a lot more pinstriping videos for everybody. Because I'm hoping I can get in and do a lot more. And if somebody knows of a car show, southern Indiana area or somewhere that needs a pinstriper at it, drop a comment on there. Let me know about it. Because I would like to go to more shows this year. I really want to get down to the rod run and pigeon forge. But I know the the city down there has a lot of laws on vendors and stuff. So I got to go I got to call them and see what all the what all the hoops I got to jump through. If any, I don't know. It may not be as bad as what I think it is. I hope not, because I'd really like to get down there this spring, this fall, sometime. All right. Let's see. I think we may leave the rest open for the blue and pink. Yeah. There we go. I don't know how good you all can see it. There is collar number one. Okay, I am back with a t-shirt change and set it next to the wood stove for a little while and it's completely dry. So now I don't have to worry about smearing the paint until the next color. But So let's get back to it here. Another little trick for you if you're doing uh and i'm saying all this stuff because it's what i do and it helps me but if i'm doing real tiny tiny lines i keep i don't thin my paint i just use it straight out of the can i almost brush it to where it gets where it's pulling pretty hard and so it's a little bit drier and it uh it just helps me to pull some little bit crisper lines that's what i'm gonna try to do right here There's the front for now. Throw a little bit of pink on there when we get about done. Hopefully that lip will help me to not smear that front around while I do the back side.
Okay, here's the blue and the black. Kind of what we got going on here. And it's kind of airy at the top. I think we're going to fill that in with the pink. We're going to get that pink ready and throw it in there. And fill in some of these other places. I left it airy, airy in just a few places there because we're getting ready to fill that in. And the front also. All of it looking really good. I keep from sticking my hands in it. Now with this pink, I'm going to have to be very, very careful because it will take over this design quickly. So I'm going to have to be very, very careful. I'm adding a color that's it that's this bright. I'll uh I try to do it just in the center or just on the outside, just so it's kind of got its own zone. So it doesn't take over every time. Well, here it is, all finished up, striped up, signed, and I'm, I'm liking it. I wasn't too sure about the pink, but, and I always do, I do that every time. I'm not sure about something, then I do it, and it turns out looking really good. So, there's the front again. But yes, I'm very pleased with it. I'm hoping he will be too, but. I'm sure he will be because it's, he usually is. I mean, anybody that says just do whatever, usually they love anything that I do. So, but all right, uh, this one's done, this project's done, but uh, I got a, uh, a pinstripe so a set of wheels uh, last week. So I'm going to put that at the end of this video because I lost half of my video. Uh, my GoPro decided to quit working half or at the start. So I didn't even, I didn't even get half my footage. So I'm just going to do a quick time lapse of me doing them wheels. And, uh, and I guess that's it. I'll sign off here and uh, keep your brushes wet and your welder hot. Stick around and watch that video. We'll see you later.